Hi, I'm Dr. Donald Fabio, and welcome to Berkeley Heights here and now. That's right, where it's all about what's happening in town to keep you informed. And tonight, we're going to start off with our municipal update segment. So we're going to find out what's happening in the municipal offices. So we're going to go remotely for that. However, besides that, we're going to have our usual updates, our business update, our community calendar update, and our community corner update so people know what's going on with the community, with the businesses, with the town, to integrate all of that as well as keeping you informed of what's happening in the municipal offices. You know, it's a, it's a resurrection of the show, but as times change, the show's going to change. So it's Berkeley Heights here and now. Let's get started with our municipal update. Um, again, Mike Mistretta from Harvard Consultants, the Township Planner. What I'm going to do tonight is just go through a PowerPoint that kind of summarizes the whole Hamilton Avenue RFP proposal process that we've been working on since, really goes back to 2012, but it really took off in 2015. You want to get the next slide? Most of you are aware of this board. This is the same used when we started off this whole process, when we did, started with the redevelopment study in the very early planning stages. The property that we're talking about tonight is to your right. It, most people know it as the upper campus of the Church of the Little Flower, um, also known as 110 Roosevelt Avenue, also known as the Hamilton Avenue School. Um, the property is just so we could orientate ourselves. Our fire department is across the street. And as you work your way across the uh, exhibit, there's a little uh, narrow piece that separates the school from the church property. That is actually owned by the township. There's a little right, it's not a right away, I'm sorry, it's an individual lot and block. So there's a property that's owned by the township. That's generally where the center line of the stream is. And then the church property, um, Church of Little Flower owns that large piece that is almost entirely wetlands and floodplains and undevelopable wooded lands uh, that separates the two buildings. And then we all know the, the library is also highlighted there, which is under construction by the library. So tonight's presentation is only on the 110 Roosevelt Avenue, the school property. We closed on the property December of 2017, and that kicked off what's known as the RFP process, the request for proposals. What's, what we did was once we closed on the property, we took ownership of it. We generally bundled, if you want to go to the next slide, Sean. Thank you. This is now just the school property. This is the only property that we're talking about. I'm using this exhibit just to start off because all of that work that, we saw, that you saw us doing between 2012, 2015 through 2017, we did a boundary survey, we did a topographic survey, we did a wetland survey, we got a letter of interpretation that established where the wetlands are located on the property. We did what's called a flood study, a line verification study that was approved by the DEP. That study established where the 100-year uh, flood uh, boundary is on the property. We also went to the DEP and got some what's called a statewide general permit. That allows certain disturbances within uh, the floodplain area. All of those permits, all of those approvals, all of that engineering work, it's called base mapping. Essentially, before we went out for an RFP and asked developers to take a look at this piece of property and give us their thoughts on it, we wanted to at least create a baseline of information that would establish the help establish what could be constructed on the property and essentially the property's value. Any potential developer who would be looking at this piece of property, 15 plus acres, have a lot of improvements on it, but they would also come and ask the township, you know, general questions. You know, how much wetlands are on there? How much can be disturbed? What does the DEP say about endangered species and woodlands and all these various issues? So we did that baseline amount of work, which helped establish the existing conditions of the property, which, as it turned out, when we went out for the RFP process, 
proved to be extremely valuable because what we tried to do is take away all the unknowns. And the more unknowns you remove from the property, the more value, the more value is placed upon it by the potential purchaser. And that came true as this process went on. Next one, please. So when we, what happened was, after we closed on the property in December of 2017, then we issued, and this is on the township website, it's also the full RFP proposal. Um, I only have the cover page on here tonight because the entire document is with uh, the clerk's office if you're, if you're interested in what went out to the prospective bidders. Um, I included this just to put a timeline at the bottom there. We issued the date of the RFP on January 23rd, 2018. Responses were originally due on February 27, 2018. After we went out, we got a request by some of the developers for a one-week extension. We considered that and we granted that to all parties. The, extend, the deadline was extended to March 6, 2018. After we received the initial, and I will go through them in a, in a minute, but after we got through all of the uh, initial responses, we provided a, we prepared a short list based on the responses, and then we had a series of interviews in this room on March 27th and March 28th with the three developers that made the short list. Then we asked them for even more information based on those interviews and asked them to re further refine their proposals and clear up any questions that the, our, the subcommittee had. Um, and the short list responded uh, amended proposals were due April 25th, uh, 2018. After we got all the documents, we evaluated them. We put them in a, we, it's an awful lot of information. Um, all of the proposals are on file with the township clerk, whether they made the short list or not, all the documents that were submitted. Um, the next slide. And I understand right off the bat, this is very difficult. You can't read this. It's so much information. It's on file with the clerk's office uh, for everybody to see. It, there, there's just, I play with it as much as I can. I don't know how I, there's so much information um, to put on this sheet that I'm just going to summarize what I think are the highlighted items. And again, all of this is on file with our township. Um, we received eight, but what this is is a chart that shows the eight bidders, the eight bids that were received. Um, and I apologize, I know it's very difficult to read, but essentially the top three, and then you'll see a darker black line across the page, those were the three developers that were shortlisted, and the bottom five were not considered after the initial round of evaluations. Um, some of the reasons right off the bat to make it uh, real simple is, and it's not just about purchase price, but purchase price, density, uh, et cetera, th th there's big ticket items on here. For instance, the top three that made the, pro that made the cut were Toll Brothers, Cahabanian, and American Properties. That's one, two, and three on top. The purchase price was, for the Toll Brothers, started at $10 million. Then it was $12 million for KHAV and $10 million for American Properties. The ones below that black line um, came in at $3 million, $3 million, $8 million, and $6 million. And now when you couple that with the density, okay, Toll Brothers on top started at 67 units, KHAV was at 93 and American Properties was at 72 units. Why didn't I consider the other five? Because the densities now increase while the purchase price is dramatically decreasing. Um, we now have 100, 130, 100, and 100. So there's a substantial more, a substantial increase in density as you can see, while the asking price or the purchase price that they put on the value of the property um, decreases dramatically from $6 million down to $3 million. So when there's a gap of, when you're looking at three that are 10, 10, and 12 versus three, three, eight, and six, 
it, it, it becomes apparent very quickly. Um, and there's, a, there's many other reasons. I'm not trying to boil it down to those two, but those are two big, big ticket items. Um, the type of units, the size of the units, the architecturals of the units, the layouts, all became very important variables to make this short list. Can you go to the next slide, please? And it, again, it's, it's, bless you, bless you. Yes. Yeah. What I tried to do is we drilled down even further on the three that we shortlisted, and I understand it's a difficult slide to read, but again, all of this information is on file with the township for everybody to see. Um, what I tried to do then is after the three that made the cut, we had a second round of interviews. We asked them to refine the proposals and asked them more detailed questions during the interview process and the presentations that they did in this room. After that series of amended proposals, we, Toll Brothers came in with a revised proposal. What I tried to show is in red on this sheet what changed from that last slide, their original proposal, after the second round of interviews, what changed in the proposal. And here we see that the Toll Brothers proposal increases. It goes from $10 million to $10,500,000. So they increased their proposal. KHAV and American Properties stayed with their original number. KHAV is 12,048,650. American Properties is 10,008,888. Next line, very important. You can stay right there, Sean. Off-site contribution. Um, we went during the interview process, plus you'll see the language in our RFP, we asked about off-site contributions. We all are aware of some traffic issues that we have out on Roosevelt Avenue and on Hamilton Avenue. In the second round of proposals, Toll Brothers comes back with an offer of $100,000 towards off-track uh, off -track traffic contributions. It's undefined, so that's something that will have to be negotiated should we move forward with tolls, but there is an offer on the table of $100,000 for off-track contribution. The other two, KHAV and American Properties, said, well, KHAV came back with 100000 up to 100000 but it's prorated share not to exceed 100000 What that means is they're going to do a traffic study or, or take a look at the improvement, and they're going to contribute what they determine or what the engineers on both sides determine is their share of the improvement and the cost to fix it. So if it's a traffic problem based on, excuse me, based on the number of vehicle trips that they're producing, they would provide a percentage of that improvement. And same thing with American properties. The difference is American properties capped it at 50,000, whereas KHOF capped it at 100,000. The no next line there is the number of market rate units. Now, when this went out originally, in our, and it's included in our fair share plan, and uh, everybody's always heard me talk about this over the last few years of a density of 100 units on this particular property. It was 100 units total with a breakdown of 80 market rate townhouses with 20 affordable units on there in order to help satisfy one component of our affordable housing plan. Toll Brothers comes back and they ask for 47 units on the site instead of the 80 that they are allowed to, which is set at the density. That's a significant difference in density. Uh, KHAV, KHAVANIA comes back with 73 of the 80. And American Properties comes in at 52. So again, one more reason why the short list. These are the only three that came in you know, below that threshold. They can build 80 market rate townhouses on this particular property. All three companies voluntarily choose not to and in, in the case of Toll Brothers, they go really low at 47 units instead of building 80. That's a very significant gap. And the key measure here is the next line is they still are providing the 20 affordable units that were required in order to meet our color regulations and all of our court document requirements. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in, in a way that we're providing our 20 affordables, we're satisfying our obligation 
to, to for affordable housing, but there's 47 units that would be constructed on the site. And again, 73 and 52 for American properties in Kehav. Uh, so the next line is in total number of units. In, it's in bold. Toll Brothers is proposing 67 units. Kehav is 93 units. And American properties is 72 un two units. It's simply the market rate units plus the 20 that's required to get to our total. All of the developers provided detailed architecturals. I'll go through those in a minute. Architecturals plus a layout and a floor plan. Toll is providing a four bedroom townhouse. Kehav and American Properties is providing a three bedroom plus a loft uh, for both of those. Um, the key items, I'm not gonna run through every one of these, but one more key item I wanna touch on uh, in this chart is the Toll Brothers and American Properties is, are, is, they are both proposing what's called master downs, whereas the KHAB is your traditional master bedroom on the second floor with your three, two or three bedrooms and loft all on the second floor. The Toll Brothers and the American Properties product are all master downs. What does that mean? Just the master bedroom is located on the first floor. It's in its own suite, has its full bath and so forth, and the bedrooms are up on the second floor. Now. It's a market rate unit. It's not age restricted. Any family can buy it, but it's earmarked, if you will, it's marketed, if you will, towards a family, obviously, not obviously, but in my opinion, a young couple starting out with a small child or uh, just starting a family is most likely not gonna choose a master down and have small children on the second floor. So by design, not by restriction, the design of the units is more earmarked towards a family that's more, you know, growing in place or aging in place and the children are, are older, whether it's high school or college age and so forth because they're upstairs by themselves. All three of the units have two car garages built into the units. Um, it, it built into every, uh, all of the market rate units. Um, two and a half, two to two and a half stories. Um, the apartment heights, one notable thing here is on the, on the KHAV one, it was a, a height of 40 foot three inches where the other ones were 30 for the toll and 38, which is a much lower height, at least on the toll one for the affordable units. Wanna to go to the next slide? This, this is just more of an analysis. It's a three-page analysis of breaking down the proposals. All three of the developers asked for a, I'm on page two of three of the, of the breakdown. All three of the developers asked for a 90-day due diligence period. What does that mean? Should the council choose one of the developers and, and enter into, adopt a resolution, that just kicks off a process. Uh, this is not a done deal. This is a process that starts. It's a 90-day due diligence period. Um, American Properties act actually asked for 120 days. Um, that's when they go through their investigation of the site, and there's a time period where they're allowed to go through it and, and probably do soil borings, groundwater work, uh, and, and test pits on the property as well, as well as many other engineering studies. And at the end of that 90 days, that's when they lock into an agreement and there's a, a go, no go period, if you will, on the project after they do their investigations. Um, do you wanna to go to the next slide? I'll just keep going. It's, all it is is it's more of a breakdown, a detailed breakdown. I hit the highlights of each one of their proposals, and I, want, I don't want to be redundant because I'm also going to walk through each one of their proposals here on the slides, and I know you could not read that last chart, so we, I hope this is a little bit better. This is a, a summary of each one of the three proposals. The first one I'm talking about is American Properties one. This is the layout that they submitted in support of their proposal. Again, there are 72 units on this property. 52 of them are market rate. 20 of them are rental affordables. The rental affordables 
are, you see the little eyebrow that's in the upper right hand corner of the property. That building back there would be the affordable units. All of the other units on the property would be the 52 market rate townhouses. Next slide. This is American Properties. This is their front elevation that they've submitted for as part of their packet. It's known as the villas. Uh, this exact type of unit is today being constructed in a, in a community in Pennington, New Jersey, right off of Route 31. That's the sample that they gave us as what they would construct on the property. Again, a little hard to read, but this is the architectural floor plan that they submitted. What it is is a two-car two garage up front, master down on this one. Next slide. And then your two bedrooms and your loft on the second floor. Next slide. That's this. We also asked for an elevation of their affordable unit. Next slide. I know these are a little hard to read, but this is what these are the drawings that were submitted for their proposal. These are the the 20 rental affordable housing units. Next slide. Now I'll go over to Kehavanian Homes proposal. This is their layout that they submitted with their proposal. Now we have 93 units, 73 are for sale market rates. Those are all of the, I guess it's a pink color, if you will, uh, sandwiched by the orange on the ends. The orange are the end units and the, I guess it's the pink color or the interior. Those are all your market rate townhouse units. The building that is in the lower uh, center of the property, that's your affordable housing units. It's a 20 unit affordable rental uh, building, 40 foot high. Um, it's constructed up against, uh, it would be constructed up against Roosevelt Avenue. You would be looking at the rear of the building on Hamilton and Roosevelt Avenue. Up on top, you see the stormwater management area. That's a detention pond or a detention basin, whether it's wet or dry. Uh, Nobody could tell yet until you do all that geotech work, but you generally have the feeling there for a layout of 93 units. Next slide. These are the market rate townhouses, the 73 of them that is proposed by Kehavanian. You see an end unit there and you also see the front elevations. Next slide. This is a typical, this is their market rate floor plan. The difference, the, the biggest difference on this floor plan versus the American properties or the one you'll see on the Toll Brothers, again, they all have the two car garage up front, but the living space is all on the first floor. And then we'll go to the next slide. And the master bedroom um, and the bedrooms are all on the second floor. There's an option, you see a little bit of a blue box in the center of the property. That is an option for people to purchase an elevator for each one of the units. That would bring you obviously from the first floor to the second floor. All of the bedrooms are on the second floor on this particular unit. <coughs> Bless you. Next slide. This, I, I pointed out before that orange color building. We'll go back to it in a minute, but this is the architectural elevation that Kehavanian submitted for their affordable, 20 unit affordable housing building. And you'll be looking that's the elevation that you would be seeing from, let me see, parking lot elevation. Yeah, the one that's rendered up front, that's rendered on top, that's the elevation that would be facing Roosevelt and Hamilton Avenue. Next slide. <clears throat> Finally, uh, the last proposal is from Toll Brothers. It's a little bit small, but you can see their layout. Um, of their units. Now we're down to 67 units. 47 of those are for sale. 20 of them are rental. The ones that are rental are the two buildings. It's a little bit hard to see, but they're the darker orange, if you will. They're on the interior of the site. There's two buildings, which I like very much. It's instead of having the one large 20 unit affordable, now you have two 10 units. They're also built within the, they're also located within the interior of the community. They're integrated from a planning point of view. This is what everybody loves because you have an affordable housing project here. 
you have 47 market rate townhouses, which are all the one color tan, if you will. The 20 affordable units are integrated into the center of the property in two separate buildings. It's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent design and layout for the affordable. It's, it's, if, if this is a, as far as an inclusionary affordable housing project, you're treating the affordable housing project on an equal par, if you will, as the, as the market rate townhouses. So I think that's uh, a very big plus. You could also see when you take it down to 67 total units, there's a lot more green on the property. <clears throat> we'll go to the next slide now. Toll Brothers, this is the slide that they gave us for their presentation of their units. Uh, most people are, are familiar with this unit. You can go right to our neighbor to the south in Scotch Plains, Shackamax and Golf Course, same unit. On the bottom right, lower right, you can see this, the end unit with a side entry. The upper left is a string of four units, the front elevation, stone in the front, very attractive architectural, very high-end product. Same, same uh, design layout that is being constructed in Scotch Plains at the Shackamax and Golf Course. The difference is these are market rate units, whereas over at Scotch Plains, it is an age-restricted community. This is not an age-restricted community. This is a market rate community in Berkeley Heights. Just another architectural, it's not as good as the last one, so we're going to skip that. This is their floor plan. Um, again, what I like about it is, again, they all have the two-car garage, but having the master down, I think, is, uh, it, it's, it sets up for a, a very nice type of community. Um, next slide. These are the bed, the first floor with the second floor with the bedrooms on top. It's just another, these are the interior layouts. Next. And same thing, just more architecturals. First floor market down, interior uh, units, all of the bedrooms, the secondary bedrooms are on the uh, second floor. Next. This is the affordable units. I spoke of those two buildings located in the center of the, of the community. This is the architectural that they submitted. Um, I, I think it's a very impressive submission. I think you, you generally don't see affordable housing uh, communities where the affordable housing units are one located within the prominent center of the community and designed to this level of architectural detail. Um, in most communities, this is the high-end unit. So they're treating the affordable units to the same level or almost to the same level um, as the market rate units and I think it's a very attractive uh, elevation. Next one. And what I tried to do is boil all of this information down to one slide and hit the highlights for you. Again, a lot of people saw me back in June of 2016 at the, uh, at the high school, I did a presentation and one of my last slides that evening, we did a projected range, everybody was asking, what do you think, what do you think this is going to go for, what can we sell it for? At that time I put a slide up there, my final slide was a projected range of 6,500,000 to 9,300,000 and that was based on 100 units. And now we are, here we are almost two years later, we've gone through the entire engineering process, we've gone through the RFP process, we've gone through the evaluation process and the shortlist process, and it, it's the, we had a, um, I should have mentioned that during this whole process, it's, this is not me, you're, you're hearing from me this evening, but there's a committee that was formed to put, that, put this together. Um, we submitted evaluation sheets for all of the members um, and it was unanimous as part of that evaluation, all of which will, are on file with our town clerk, uh, the scorecards, if you will, during this process. Once we shortlist the three, the American Properties, KHAV, and the Toll, we sent out an evaluation sheet that summarized 
the, the pluses and minuses of each one of the proposals. It came back unanimous. Each member of the subcommittee supported the Toll Brothers proposal, and the, and the summary is on this board right here. The Toll Brothers proposal is for $10,500,000 for 67 total units, plus there is a reimbursement, and this goes for all three of the proposals that was part of the RFP. All of that work that I spoke of that we did over from 15, 16, 17, and 18, um, there was $150,000 in professional fees incurred to do all of that engineering and base mapping work and legal fees and so forth. That is all being recouped by the township. They're, they're reimbursing the township for that, and that was a requirement of the RFP. That's not on any one of the proposals. That was a requirement for all of the respondents. <clears throat> Plus, there's a contribution of $100,000 towards off-site traffic improvements. I have in parentheses there the firehouse. That has, I have it in parentheses because that has not been negotiated what those improvements are going to be or if it's going to be for the firehouse or if it's going to be for another improvement. Um, we are staying away from the Snyder Avenue, Hamilton Avenue um, intersection because we're, everybody's aware of the, inch, the issue with the traffic signal at that location. That's being addressed under a separate proposal. <clears throat> so we're not earmarking any of this money for that because that's already covered. So this is additional and separate 100000 for off-site traffic improvements. Um, another strong proposal with this respondent is 47 market rate units with master downs targeted towards uh, an aging couple with older children is proposed. Keep in mind, the RFP that went out and the documents that are filed with the court provided for up to 80 market rate units. So there's a significant reduction in the overall density on the property from 80 to 47 markets. The location of the two affordable housing buildings within the commuting, I think it was spectacular design. Uh, the way they're treated it, they, they're not hidden in a corner or, or anything like that. They're, they're integrated, inclusionary, classic development. Um, their proposal included, and this is all on top of the asking price of 10.5, the demolition and removal of all buildings and structures and the removal of all asbestos materials on the property. There were detailed studies done by Langen Engineering that we retained, that the town retained in order to go out there and do a very comprehensive report on the uh, existing structures. Um, they estimated that to come in at nine, 975000 just for that line item alone. So that's all on top of the asking price. Um, again, high-end, what I consider high-end architecture and building materials for all building types, not just the market rate units, but the market rate and the affordable. I think it's, I think they're spectacular design. Um, they estimate the sales value, the sales price of the units on the markets between 800,000 to a million dollars for each of the market rate units. Those are the 47. <clears throat> and in the proposal, and this goes for all of the proposal, all of the respondents, we put in there in the RFP that they have to take consideration that the library is temporarily located on the property and we have assurances through this response from them that the library is going to be on the property for at least two years. Um, I say three months, 18 months plus three months. Three months is, the, remember, the 90-day due diligence period. So there's three months right there just for their, them to do their due diligence. Then they estimate in order before they are closing on the property, it's going to take approximately 18 months to do all of the engineering, permitting, come in front of the board, planning board, get their approvals. They have to go to DEP, get another approval from the DEP, as well as there's a list of you know all utilities and so forth. So their entire engineering to get ready for construction is estimated to take, they say between 18 months to 24 months. I just took the shorter time frame here just to be a little conservative. And then in the RFP we asked for and they responded that they would allow the library to maintain to remain on the property for an additional three months thereafter. So that's a that's a solid two years. 
And that clock doesn't even start until you enter in a redevelopment agreement with them uh, and, and, and they have the go ahead should the town uh, council choose them. So the library, I, I could, I could, I feel I could confidently say that for the next two years at a minimum, we don't have to worry about the library having to be relocated off the, off the site and it's a, there's a good chance it could be a longer time period than that. back to the show. It's time for our business update. Uh, Paul Newer, Terrell Rental, been around a long time in town, but it's not about Taylor Rental, Paul. No, not at all. This and, is about Berkeley Heights. Yeah, well, which is really a cool thing we want to talk about. Another initiative where we want to bring the businesses, the people, and the surrounding communities together. And it's through the street fair, but it's not just our annual street fair, isn't no, it? No, it's a uh, summer festival and street fair. Very We've cool. taken the summer street fair sort of morphed it into more of a family-friendly activity. Uh, we want families to come out. We don't want them shelling out a lot of money. Uh, we want the kids to have a good time. Enjoy downtown Berkeley Heights. Enjoy the businesses that will be open that day. Get to meet their neighbors. Get to do some activities at a very inexpensive way. Uh, maybe jump on a, a truck or a loader or a moving van. Oh, you're going to have some of those big trucks big there? Big trucks. We're going to try to bring in a touch-a-truck area. Oh, cool. Um, something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to have a beer garden for the adults down okay. at Delicious Heights. Okay. They've uh, decided they're going to uh, help us out with the beer garden. Nice. Um, it's going to be a lot more of a family-friendly afternoon, Sunday afternoon, June 24th, okay. 10 a.m. to 5 o'clock. Um, should be a lot of fun. Uh, we're trying to get the businesses in town to get involved. Okay. Uh, it's time for the businesses in Berkeley Heights to give back a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, many of us have been in town for a long, long time. We have some great people who have worked with us and for us for years. Mm -hmm. and it's time for these businesses to say, hey, let's give a little bit back to the well, people. Well, I know we have been. I know we have been. We've had a very active business community oh, yeah. last year. This happens to be a Chamber of Commerce event, correct? correct? Yep, Suburban Chambers of Commerce, New Providence, Summit, Berkeley Heights, all one big chamber. Nice. Uh, we're hosting it here in town. It's one of the bigger fundraisers for the chamber. But besides being a fundraiser, well, we really want it to be uh, something for the community to stand up and say, hey, this was a lot of fun. Well, and again, that seems to be the initiative of a lot of the events that we've seen in the last year in town. Yep. Where the businesses are bringing things to the community to bring the community out so they can interact together, spend some time together, right. and get to know one another, essentially. Right. Uh, both the businesses and the uh, citizens to right. help benefit both. Oh yeah, we have some uh, a lot of business interest, a lot of people who have stepped forward already. Nice. Summit Medical, the the Connell Corporation, uh, the good, new Embassy yeah. Suites up in Berkeley Heights. Good. Um, they're all stepping forward. Uh, Smith Chiropractic, mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Reynolds is going to be a sponsor. Um, Very nice. Uh, JCPNL is going to be a sponsor. We have oh, quite cool. a few uh, sponsors that are stepping up. They're going to be paying for the rides. Oh, great. We're going to have the kids be able to come and enjoy a bounce on a ride or a pony ride or a game trailer, and hopefully the, uh, the community can benefit from that. Excellent, excellent. So the date again was June 24th? Sunday, June 24th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mark your calendars. And for businesses that want more information to give back to the community even more, how do they get involved? They can contact the chamber. They can contact me at Taylor Rental. Great. Uh, we'll be glad to drop off a sponsorship uh, form. Um, we're trying to get uh, everybody involved. It's going to be a fun afternoon. The touch a truck area is going to be a wonderful place with a cool. lot of different loaders and mm -hmm. tractors mm -hmm. and buses. So it should be a lot of fun. Sounds neat. It's our summer festival and street fair and Chamber of Commerce is putting it on for us and for the community. Paul Newer, thank you very much. Oh, for you're very you welcome. Community. See you on the 24th. Sounds like a plan. We'll see you there too. Welcome to the Community Corner segment, and Berkeley Heights is really known for the amount of volunteerism in town. We talk about it frequently, and that, of course, revolves around so many of the service clubs and service organizations we have. Unfortunately, a lot of those service clubs have been dwindling in numbers and in membership, except for one. One service club in town is actually growing in membership and in growing to its service back to the community, and that's the Berkeley Heights Rotary. And they have a major fundraiser coming up, and Jim Ramenthal, the Rotary president, is going to tell us about that. Jim, thank you very much for your time. And Talk what's the pleasure. Rotary got planned for the community uh, this month or in June? In June. On June the 9th, we'll be celebrating our 15th annual uh, Rubber Ducky wow. event. Nice. Uh, it's a four-hour festival from noon to 4 o'clock. 
and about three o'clock, three fifteen, the three or four thousand ducks go into the river and they float down the river and the, the winning uh, raffle ticket, if you are the first winning, if you happen to be purchasing one of these, which you'll need to do for five dollars each. One of those gets you one of these. Gets you one of those, something okay. like that. And if you do that, you will win four t box seats to the Yankee game on, wow. a, on a Saturday in July. They're Very seven, cool. ten rows up from a field between the uh, Yankee, t Yankee dugout and the home plate. Oh, neat. Excellent seats, plus neat. you get a parking pass. That's the grand prize. Second nice. prize, a 50-inch uh, widescreen TV. Great. Third prize is uh, 12 months of uh, Hall's flowers for nice. the entire year. Nice. And the fourth prize is a three-month family membership uh, to the YMCA. Yeah, very nice, so, very nice. That's that, great. And several others, but those are the four those that are, are the being, main those are the main, main prizes. Main prizes, yes. Now, the Rotary does a lot in town, but where does the money go? Let's be a little more specific. Sure. As a, as a fundraiser, this is our major fundraiser for the club. Okay. It's also a major fundraiser for Troop uh, 368 Boy Scouts and Troop 68 Boy Scouts. All right. Uh, we utilize the money for many reasons. We give four $1,000 $1, scholarships to, nice. to a worthy GL students mm -hmm. every year, high school students. We, give, we, are, we sponsor the Medical Alert program for over 200 seniors nice. in New Providence and Berkeley Heights. So they can get a free Medical Alert. It's a minor funding. cost, but minor we monitor cost. it, we maintain it, and then, of course, annually we, we're, we always have one of our members come and make sure that that's nice. going, ongoing. Nice. Uh, there's a whole variety of other uh, events that we sponsor. Uh, the, the summer concerts, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of, of a variety of different uh, public community outreach programs that we also help and th that helps to fund this this event funds all of that wonderful wonderful now uh, memberships increasing in the rotary isn't it it is it is yeah. it's uh, we, we've been we're, we're trying to ideally we'd love to double it but if we'd like to get a 15 or 20 percent and the, the nice thing about our club we only meet twice a month at, yes. on uh, lunchtime second and fourth Wednesdays of the month uh, we meet at Chimney Rock uh, and what, what that allows anyone to do in the community to, to just participate to, to, so we can identify uh, what it is we're doing for the month. And we also try to get, have a program, an educational program that's, that's beneficial to, to sure, our group. Sure members, yeah. and, and the membership and the, uh, the lunch is open to anyone in the yeah. community. Great. So, so if you uh, come on down and visit the Rotary at uh, 12 o'clock on the 12 o'clock on the, on the night, uh, the, uh, 12 o'clock uh, for lunch, it's 12.15, second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. Great. For, for that event. Now, yes. what about these guys? When are these guys going to Well, these guys will swimming? be in the water again on uh, June the 9th. June the 9th. From noon till the festivals from no noon till 4. Great. At approximately 3 or 3.30, they'll all go in the water and we'll have a winner or two. Family festival, food, music, Food, games music, for the kids. Local, local bands, lots of kids, lots for kids of all ages. Car we have, show again this year? The car show will be there. As long right. as it's not raining, they'll all come out in, in force. It's a, it's a great event. They have, they have a great time and they have lots of, uh, lots of games and prizes for the little guys as great. well as the, uh, the uh, great, uh, great. mid schoolers. I know there's some uh, duck uh, uh, adoption uh, um, papers in my office. So if you want to adopt a duck, which is basically one of all these you need tickets. Is one of these. Okay, we call it adopt a duck. Adopt a duck. But raffle. where else can they get adopt a duck raffle? Actually, the, the day of, you can actually get it uh, at the day of the event if you ch so choose. All the all of the um, the, the uh, Rotary members are selling them. Mm -hmm. Myself and yourself as well are selling them. So you can either get them at our office, and if you want to get a little more information, you can also go to uh, Rotary uh, uh, Berkeley Heights Rotary dot org and you get some additional information online. Okay, so look for the banners around town about the Rubber Ducky Festival. Uh, look for the businesses that are selling them and come on by on June 9th and uh, adopt a duck. Now, Jim, I'm gonna keep this one. It's got a little surfboard under his It's all yours and I know that you like to surf. That's it, duck. man, that's, that's, it. My, that's my that's ticket. That's your thing. So, Jim, uh, businesses that wanna get involved too, can they get involved? Uh, yes, that's, uh, thank you for, for mentioning that. Uh, both not-for-profits or local business in town you can, as a festival event, we do a 10 by 10 booth. Great. It's only $100 for Great. the local business and not-for-profits are, are no charge. How about that? So Again, giving back. You want to give back and show yourself a little bit of your, about your business or about your organization. It's always good to have Very that. Very nice. Well. You know, it, it's wonderful to see all the community service that service clubs do and yes. volunteers do in town. And this is just a really great example of it. So thank you, thank the other members of the Rotary and all the volunteers that are out there and making this community such a great community. It's our pleasure. Oh, our thank pleasure. you, Jim, Doc. good job. Thank you. We'll see you on the 9th and adopt the duck, baby. Adopt be the there. duck, baby. 
So much is going on in town today, in this week, next week, next month. But the summertime, it's a really active, active time in Berkeley Heights. There is a lot of things that are available for the community and for the residents that live in town. And with me is actually the man behind the scenes at the Communications Committee, Nick Schiavo. So Nick, thanks for coming out today. Um, you've been a Really, you and I started the Communications Committee, I think, about eight, maybe ten yep. years ago. Yep. Um, so thank you for all your hard work. Oh, thank you. And it's all diligent behind the scenes, so good job. But today, you're, you're the man. You're the man with the calendar. So what kind of things can we look forward, calendar-wise, this summer in town? Well, we got to, once again, the Recreation Department is uh, sponsoring the summer concerts. Oh, great. Great. Excellent. Yep. Traditional at Berkeley Heights. All right, the four. Uh, we're still going to do the we four. Got, we've got four. We've got them on Wednesday, July 18th, Wednesday, July 25th, Wednesday, Ju August 1st, and the last one is Tuesday, August hmm. 7th. A Tuesday. But here's a reason why. Okay, I'm ready. That's National Night Out. Oh, baby. And in conjunction with the Berkeley Heights Police Department, oh, nice. we're going to participate in National Night Out, and we're going to learn about safety. You know, I love it when the community and the municipality or the businesses and the community get together. And that's I exactly that. who's going to be there. There'll be some businesses, there'll be refreshments, the police department will be nice. there help talking with the citizens. Nice. And nice. there'll be a Billy Joel cover band, there'll be a party band. Oh baby, bring bring your family, bring your children, bring your chair, bring a chair, and bring some uh, ready for enjoyment. Yeah, yeah. The, con the summer concert series is always well received. Um, everybody really seems to enjoy it. So you said Billy Joel is going to be the last one. Do we have the other dates booked? The with other, the acts yet, well, or? we're 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 we're, sure we're, work yet. we're working on that, okay. but we also, we also have a party band. Okay. Latest news is a party band. Oh, so. all right. So I mean, that's not on the same night as Billy no, Joel. That's no, no, but other that's one. that's the that's the Got other it. one. Okay. Got it. All right. And so. more are being booked. Excellent, um, excellent, well. excellent. So, uh, four comers summer concert series. Yeah. Got the street fair. That's on June, I think, that's 24th. June 24th. Great. We got the Rubber Ducky event. That's June 9th. That's June 9th. 9th. Okay, so, so anything else happening on the calendar? Not, not yet, but right. this is the summer. Things could change and, and go to the website, the Berkeley Heights website okay. for, for change, for updates. Mm -hmm. But look, you've got the Rubber Ducky, you've got the Street Fair, you've got summer concerts. Nice. Berkeley Heights. Family, friends, community, businesses. Hey, man, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. That's it, Nick. Thank okay. you very much. Again, we appreciate all your support. With and the thank you for all your help. Hey, it's, it, it's all about giving back. You know the drill. And we'll see you outside in Berkeley Heights. That's a plan. Okay.